If you're like me, you're a cat person. And if not, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a dog person, because thinking in total dichotomies is not only stupid, it's moronic and dangerous. Ew. But as I was saying, maybe you've noticed your cat acting strange sometime after an ant infestation. I know I have. I accidentally left a can of soda on my desk and the next morning it was just swarmed with ants. Like, like angry moms to a Black Friday toaster. And after dealing with the ant situation by brutally spilling their little tiny guts one by one, hurrah, hurrah, suddenly my cat Sasha loved the heck out of that spot. Why is that? I wondered. And that is today's lesson. Cats, like many animals, communicate in ways beyond that of typical human communication. There's vocal communication, and then there's body language. These are the two most common among humans, beyond the unique to us writing and reading, of course, but a lot of animals communicate through pheromones and scent. Some more than others, obviously. There are theories that we humans also use pheromones, though not nearly as heavily as animals do, and it's an ongoing research project for many. Anyway, cats use pheromones to communicate. Most commonly in the wild, it's used to mark territory. When a cat pees on your wall or rubs its face against your leg, it's marking its territory by putting its scent on you. So other cats know what's up. In fact, pheromones are why catnip is even a thing. And catnip is a great example to start explaining this whole situation. Catnip is a fragrant plant that it just so happens to create a chemical called how to pronounce nip. But, uh, nepetalactone. It's nepetalactone. Which, to cats, just so happens to be the pheromone that says, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you! I love you. And thus, it causes them to have a state of euphoria from this overstimulation of love. And they get very happy and cuddly, and sometimes cats will take it a bit too far and start freaking out, like, actually getting kind of hi am i in a dream there's no way i could be feeling this much love help i'm dreaming what's going on Ooh. Ooh. some have described cats on catnip as similar to that of a human on a hallucinogenic drug but thankfully catnip doesn't cause all of the other negative side effects relating to such drugs in fact some cats couldn't even care less about catnip about half of them even it just doesn't mean as much perhaps because cats have a good chance of being emotionless sociopaths. Isn't that right, Sasha? Ooh, you little apex predator of darkness. <laughs> you need to be brushed. Now let's talk about ants. Ants use pheromones a lot. Some species of ants communicate almost exclusively on pheromones even. Varying pheromones can say such things as, where is the queen? Where is the food? Follow me. Where is the nest in relation to my current position? And much, much more, all just through pheromones. Some ants don't even have eyes because they, they just relied so much on pheromones, they don't need them. Now, things get interesting when you start crossing pheromones between species. Some things tend to get lost in translation. Look, she's marking me with her scent because I belong to this cat. And I don't just mean like the occasional English where there's just like, some direct words that have similar meanings and they kind of like, eh, it kind of works, but you know, there's a little bit of detail lost in translation. No, I mean, sometimes there's totally opposite meanings going on here. Why don't you look at the camera, Sash? This opposite meaning is exactly the case between cats and ants and olives, by the way. Never leave out the fun facts. Oleic acid is a pheromone fatty acid found inside of ants, but just on the inside. Meaning, when an ant forgets how to ant and drops its guts all over the place, or you squish it, all that oleic acid comes out and spreads through the air. To other ants, this pheromone rightly states, WARNING! WARNING! HIGH LEVEL OF DANGER IS IN THE IMMEDIATE VICINITY! YOU WILL DIE IF YOU GET TOO CLOSE! RUN FOR YOUR LIVES! DEATH IMMINENT! Which is a very good thing for recently killed corpses to say. For cats, though, this exact same pheromone says something completely different. It says, Oh, hello. Hello there, cat. Welcome back to your friendly, completely safe household where you can relax. This place is familiar to you. Also, I love you. 
Wow. Oleic acid is actually one of the chemicals that cats produce in their facial pheromone mixture. So when they rub up against something with their face to mark it as theirs, between 43 and 65% of that marking is with oleic acid. So when there is suddenly a small spot that is covered in oleic acid, where you squashed some ants, they see that spot as super familiar and safe to them. Could this be their favorite spot? Or maybe the favorite spot of a friend? Yeah, completely safe and relaxing. They must have loved this spot. That's why it's covered in this marking. Very nice. Meow. And that's why oleic acid, synthetic or otherwise, is a common ingredient in those cat calming sprays that help your cat get used to a new home or a new cat tower or a trip to the vet. A lot of the time, the oleic acid in those mixtures is taken from olives. And likewise, there are tons of reports of cats loving olives as well, mainly green ones. But why would an olive have this pheromone? Obviously, olives can't communicate much because they're olives. So what are they trying to do? Communicate with cats? Communicate with ants? Nobody knows for sure, but there is one theory that is that olives are trying to communicate with ants. Oleic acid isn't only a signal for danger to ants, but it is also a basic sign that says, hey, I'm dead. Uh, could you come get my body? So when the coast is clear and whatever the danger was is gone, the ants actually can use that same signal to find the dead bodies of the ants again to bury them. Oh yeah, fun fact, many species of ants have ant graveyards. Why? That's another video. Just know that they do. And now if you were an olive containing a seed, you would want that to get underground so that you can grow into a tree. So if you trick the freaking stupid ants into thinking you're an abnormally large dead ant, they might bury you. Win-win. It's the same reason flowers smell good. It's to attract bees to pollinate them. Only now it's ants and burying. <laughs> Insects sure are stupid. Mm, and plants are eerily smart. What are you all hiding? So now you know why some cats love ants and olives. Use that knowledge however you see fit. Olives aren't even toxic to cats, though they also don't need them for any reason at all. Just like humans, really. Olives are the bane of my existence, ruining so many perfectly good pizzas. Ugh, I don't like olives. Probably because I'm not a cat, I'm an ant. So did you learn something? Hopefully. And even if you didn't, check out these other great lessons. They're great. And I love you. Are you covered in ants? You seem so familiar and friendly. Meow. Yeah.